everything. You want to buy everything. Yeah. That pasta back there is the best pasta I've ever had. Living close to a good market makes a world of difference when shopping for ingredients. It's also great when you're stuck for ideas on what to cook. I'm looking for a little bit of inspiration. I brought Emmanuel along with me today. I know he loves a good market and I'm hoping he might have some suggestions. This is the Trompette de la Mort. Very exotic. Trompette octa. Some butter, garlic, parsley, salt and pepper. Fry pan, bam. You don't need anything else. Look at all these beautiful preserved olives and uh, uh, small goods. Uh, it's small goods. <laughs> That's what we call them. It's not that small. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these gorgeous potatoes. I definitely want to do something seasonal and a bit wintry, I think. Well, I think I'm going to do a soup. I think I want to do a soup as well now. I always stop here and I have a piroshki. I can't wait to try some actually. I know, they're delicious. My favourite is spinach and ricotta. Mm. Thank you. Oh, look at this. Oh, yep. Let's dive in. Oh, yum. Beautiful. Isn't that delicious? Oh. It's really soft. Mm. I just realised that every country in the world got their own pies. Mm. And in France, we've got a tourt. In Australia, it's got the beef pie. Mm. Russians got the proroski. Peroshki. Peroshki. You know what? I think I have an idea oh. for what I'm going to cook. Well, I'm getting scared now. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Like the Adelaide Central oh, Market. Yeah. Every time I go to Adelaide, I love this market. It reminds me so much European. Really? Fantastic atmosphere. Well, I was really inspired by the piroshki, and I'm going to do my own version of it, which is a baked version. Ah. Very hearty little things. <laughs> hearty? <laughs> hearty. Ah. Hearty. Hearty. <laughs> like the way you say Excuse that. Excuse me for my French English. Emmanuel, what are you making today? Well, today I'm going to be Franco Russian. I'm going to make the gâteau Napoleon. Because, I mean, the French and Russian have been uh, connected for a long time when Napoleon was over there. Because mm. every time he came, he would come up with something. And all his chef was going with him anyway and come back with some food. And in the 18th century also, all the big name chefs like uh, Edouard Nignon, uh, Carême, they all went and worked for, for the Tsar over there. Because he was very fancy, he wanted a French chef. Right. So all that Russian and French influence came back with the chef when they come home. Maybe because he didn't want to eat piroshki anymore. No, 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 yeah, probably had enough. <laughs> well, I might get started. Please. On my piroshki feeling. OK. Butter and oil. And it's just really sautéing um, a few simple ingredients. We've got chicken, we've got a mixture of mushroom, cabbage and carrot, just chopped that is really soy, finely. Yeah, that is. Yeah, very yeah. Eastern European. And you can really use any mince you want. Yeah. And then I've got some garlic here, which I'm going to start with. Some... And they also like cooking with shallots, shallots. as well, yes. Yeah, yeah, shallots. Many European cook with shallots. We've also got some chopped up hard boiled mm. egg. Yeah, so that's actually really good because it soaks up a lot of the moisture. Yep. And some caraway seeds, paprika, salt, pepper. Very simple. Yeah, very simple. Well, I think I'm going to start with my secret dough. Well, I'm about to show you the ancestor of puff pastry. This is really, really simple dough, flour and butter. Yeah. Is the butter room temperature? The, uh, yes, thank you. Yes. Very, of course, <laughs> when you make dough, the butter must be at room temperature. Otherwise, you have a nightmare. We just combine the flour and butter. Well, I'm just going to interrupt and add my caraway seeds. Oh, OK. Give them a bit of a toast. And then I'm going to add my chicken. Chicken. Yep. Which already means. Yep. I just have to cook the chicken. OK. Yep. Now, what I'm going to do is to put the wet ingredient into my dough. Mm -hmm. One thing that I, didn't f I forgot before is to put the salt. Now, the wet ingredient, today it's cream. So let's put this in. Is that just regular cream? It's a sour cream. Sour cream, yes. Yeah. And then eggs, one egg, and basically combine all the ingredients together. What I need to do now is work the dough until it comes nice and Smooth. And the bowl should be clean when the dough is ready. Ah. Okay, I'm going to add my paprika. 
And this is just the mixture of vegetables. And you can really use anything you want. You can use potato or any sort of humble vegetable. Humble vegetable, yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to cook it till the vegetables are, you know, tender. Yeah. But hey, you know, your dough looks beautiful. Now, I need seven little balls. The running of the dough, it's like running a brioche, really. You just put it, everything inside, put it on a bench, squash it, and just roll it into oh. a nice little ball. Okay? Now, like every dough, they need to rest. This goes in the fridge for two hours. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to finish my piroshki filling, and I've just got parsley, so all the vegetables are cooked now. Pepper. Ooh, that looks like a lot of salt, doesn't it? And then the eggs. I love the hard-boiled eggs in there, actually. Yeah. This is almost like a French fitting you're doing there. Really? Yeah. OK, that's good. That's it. Done. So I'm just going to put that onto a plate and just let it cool down before I use it to stuff the porosity. OK. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a crème pâtissière. So okay. I'm going to put this milk and the vanilla pod and bring it to the bowl. In the meantime, and I'm sure everyone are familiar with crème pâtissière now. I wonder how many uh, gallons of this you've made in your life. <laughs> oh, my God, I don't know. <laughs> now, just briefly whisk your yolks, just break them. Put the cassonade sugar, which is a light brown sugar, but if you can't find the cassonade, which is a French sugar, Light brown sugar will do the job, OK? Mm -hmm. So whisk until ribbon consistency. Now, that's going to come quite quick. Yeah. So you see that? That's the colour we're looking for. That's what we call ribbon. Yeah. And now I'm going to add the flour, plain flour, combined together. There we go. Now the milk should be ready. I think it's good. All right. And now what you do? is you put this without not stressing anymore, just put it all in once. Yeah. You really debunked that myth for me because yes. I, in, in recipe books, they always say, when you pour your hot milk in, whisk madly. Oops. There is no danger whatsoever. And you just uh, pass it through a sieve. Yep. Basically, what I'm doing there is I'm discarding the vanilla pod and I'm also going to make sure I don't have any egg shell because you never know. <gasps> oh. So, there we go. Done. And now I'm going back on the stove mm -hmm. and cook it for about eight minutes on very high. Like its culture, Russian cuisine is rich and varied in character. But with relatively few immigrants, it's not that easy to find in Australia. But it is out there, and I was invited to join some members of my local Russian community. They'd invited me to share in a Russian get-together. Olga and Irene were my hosts, and they'd been busy preparing some traditional dishes. <laughs> Look at all this. What have you got here? Some special dishes for our party. Yeah. That is pancake piroshki. This is ikra. We've got pork with onions, cheese, with the mayonnaise. And this is Russian walnut cake. And here we've got a Russian classic. Ah, uh, that's yeah. classic <laughs> Russian tradition, Russian as you know. Yeah. Russian zakuska. Vodka, caviar, always go yeah. together. Well, I can't wait to try all of these. What time are the guests arriving? Oh, my goodness, in about half an hour. I better come around and help you. Come and help us. <laughs> The building blocks of today's Russian cuisine are found in the peasant food of the rural population. Put, 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 mix. This is reflected in many of the dishes today. There's plenty of meat, mushrooms and root vegetables. <laughs> not to mention the obligatory caviar and vodka. Thank you. <laughs> well, there's a huge variety of dishes here. But one thing that each dish has in common is that it's very hearty and there's lots of it. But my favourites are probably the pork, the crepe stuffed with potato and mushroom, and also the sliotka, which is pickled herring. I couldn't understand a word of it, but the language sounds beautiful. <laughs> to see 
see how other people practice and preserve their traditions. Thank you very much. Put that lovely crème pâtissière into a bowl, mm -hmm. and we are going to incorporate a large amount of butter. Okay, done. Ah, oh, you put it in all at once. Oh, all in once. It's hot, it's going to melt quickly. Yeah. And when the butter is incorporated, the crème pâtissière will have to rest for a couple hours, and I'm done. Ah, okay, well, I'm going to get on with making my poroshki. Ah, poroshki. So I've prepped a few here, and I'm going to stuff them with my poroshki filling. I love this mix already. You like it? Yeah. Now, obviously, you can just squish these together using a fork, but I like to crimp them into a really nice pattern. It's like an apple turnover. And all you do is actually quite simple. You mm. just get the edge of your thumb and you just keep going all around like this. Beautiful. Yeah, that is so perfect. Oh, thank you. No, really, really, I mean it. That's excellent. Now, I've made some dough before. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to roll it until you get a very uh, fine paste rate. And that is what I'm talking about. And goes on a tray covered with baking paper. And now I've got the oven on 230 degrees and I'm going to put them in for about 10 minutes. Okay. Well, I've got some ready pre-cooked. Now I'm just going to start to assemble my gâteau au Napoléon. These are absolutely intriguing. I <laughs> know. So you get a little bit of crème pâtissière. Yeah. And there we go. So you got, make sure you go on the edge, just like that. Mm -hmm. There is no fuss about this cake, so I think you, hello, you can make that. And hold, put a hat, and put your hand in your pocket. <laughs> it's very rustic, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is, it is. Not like me. There we go. A bit more. And I'm going to build up for about six biscuits. Uh -huh. And reserve the last one for crumble. Ah, crumbling. And this is, as you can see, the ancestor of the vanilla slice. Ah, of course. There we go. It's going to look nice at the end, trust me. Napoleon should be looking at me now and said, Oh, he's put it back to life again. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. <laughs> OK. Well, I'm nearly finished as well. I've just egg washed those. So that's my last little poroshki. And I'm going to egg wash nice. this one. And then I'm going to pop it in the oven. Are you finished yet? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> well, I think my biscuits are ready. Ready? So I've done quite well, yes. Oh, nice. See? Nice golden colour. Very nice. There we go. Well, I'm going to put my poroshki in the oven. They'll be 15 to 20 minutes at about 180. Oh, excellent. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up my gâteau Napoleon. Mm -hmm. Bye. I love doing that. Now, camouflage. Because <laughs> I don't like it. Like, no. <laughs> I'm going to do a simple way now. Oh, you're just going to roll I'm it. I'm going to roll it like this. Like a wagon wheel. Yeah, that's it. And this is really, really, really lovely. I love that. So this, as it is now, goes in a fridge overnight. Uh -huh. And these will just stay really yeah, crispy. They would stay very crispy. But now, of course, as you know me, I made one before. Oh, which is already... look at that. The only things we need to do now is dust it with a little bit of icing sugar. That really does look beautiful now, actually. I like and it. And then... And voila. Oh, wow. 